we're going to transition to more long form questions, get to know you a little bit. Uh, so, for AAU basketball, um, you play for Fairfax Stars, Cardinal. What are some key lessons you learned there that have stuck with you to the NFL? Um, just the hard work I had to put in in order to like earn a scholarship playing AAU, and also just loyalty. I mean, a bunch of teams just tried to get me off of those teams just because it wasn't like real big AAU programs, but. I just, I had fun playing with those teams. So it was like, I want to go play with guys I don't know and just go different places. So I think the loyal aspect of just staying with them and just and being hard work, hard work. And what is the advice that you've gotten specifically from an AAU coach? Um, control what you can control. Like at the end of the day, a bunch of things are going to happen out there, but as long as you can control what you can, you control, like things will go, eventually end up going your way. What's one of your favorite AAU tournament memories? Ooh, I would say probably playing in Florida. I think it's called Super Showcase. Mm -hmm. um, so it, going down there every year and just all the teams from all over the country coming there. You always met a bunch of met a bunch of people everywhere. So just seeing the different top players in your class is quite being once one gym playing against each other. And how did you basketball helped you get ready for elite football. Um, shoot, help you. It taught me how to be more responsible. I would say that. Um, going into college, coming out of high school, I mean, I wasn't lazy, but I wasn't the hardest worker. But then, go, college is a whole different animal. So the way Coach Smart ran things and the way. It was just, we were always on top of things, always working, working. And then it also taught me to be more diligent with the things that I did, so. And you spent two years under Shaka Smart, legendary coach. What are some things that you take away from those two seasons? Oh man, well, three years, but uh, I, I learned a lot from Coach Smart, man. Um, shoot, he pushed me on the court and off the court. Like my first semester of college, I had a 4.0. Coach Smart, uh, I was, I'm was i a quiet person if you don't know me. And Coach Smart used to always like make me make me talk because I'm not a big talker. So I would go in the office. He will make me come to his office every day, scream at the top of my lungs, just being more vocal. But the biggest thing I got from him is probably being mentally tough, how to fight through fatigue and different things like that because that was something I really struggled with. And um, I would get down on myself. So he taught me just to be mentally tough and how to get through tough situations. And your VCU season, talk numbers, by the end of your VCU class, you started in over 100 for 1,000 points, 600 rebounds, 80 steals for 80 steals, and over 200 blocks. When you look back at it, what does it mean to you to kind of have that kind of an impact for the VCU Rams? Oh, man, it's still kind of crazy because <laughs> going in, I didn't expect to do all that stuff. Um, like, that's not really what I thought about, but looking back at it, it's real cool. Um, a thousand points, like, I didn't even shoot that much and I scored a thousand points, which is kind of shocking to me because a lot of guys haven't scored a thousand points. There's only maybe 20 something, 30 people in that group. So um, it's an honor, um, just a pleasure to play for, v be been able to play for VCU and especially being in my home state. So it was just great. That's awesome. And so, Obviously, you're not playing basketball anymore. Yeah. What was that decision like for you back to football? Um, it was hard. Like, it wasn't really too hard because, I mean, as my time went on, I was still playing in the post. I mean, I could have probably made the transition to basketball, but it probably would have been a longer road to go into the NBA. So I was like, um, shoot, football teams are calling. Might as well. I played football growing up from third grade until ninth grade. So it wasn't like I had never played before. I just never played on that competitive level. So I was like, might as well go try football. And if football doesn't work, maybe two years. I'm only two years removed from basketball. So I always can always go back, but it ended up working out. So I've been here ever since. And what kind of advice would you give athletes that are kind of juggling sports and having to either whether it's college or one to go pro 
Um, shoot, just follow your heart, man. Um, follow your heart and just work hard. At the end of the day, you know, you can't lie to yourself. You know how much work you're putting in. You could do all, post these videos, do all that other stuff, but you really know how much work you're putting in to try to get to your goal. So just be true to yourself, be honest with yourself. And once you realize that and put that work in, you can honestly get wherever you want to go. And speaking of getting to go, undrafted is now an established player for the Colts. I mean, what was that journey like to go from undrafted to a name there in that organization? Oh, man. Um, shoot, my first year, I got hurt on what? My third day of camp. So that's why I said depressing because like, I, I was out until October. And then I came back, practice squad. It was a transition because I wasn't playing any games. So I was just practicing, practicing. Then my second year of camp, um, I probably played like 12 plays in the preseason. That's all, man, I might just go back and play basketball. If this, if this year I don't play, and then, but I was getting better, of course, but I wasn't playing. But at the end of the day, you want to play, you're a competitor. So um, four games in, starter gets hurt. They call me up. I got called up. I wasn't even expecting to get called up. They just called me up. I'm like, oh, what, me? Like, first game blocking Jadavion Clowney, JJ Watt, but, it was a great learning experience play and ever since then it's just I've just been making steady progress over time. At the end of the day, they just want to see you keep making progress, keep getting better. I just I try to get one percent better every day, whatever I do, whether it's with my body, um, on the field, film work, anything. So I just kept getting better and then now I'm at a point where um, I'm gonna keep contributing on the team. And that first and maybe not the first big moment that obviously there are a lot of steps game day, but I mean 2018, 6 yard pass, arm catch. I feel. Oh man, <laughs> I still don't believe it happened. Like, like we talked about that play during the week because the ball wasn't supposed to come. In. It was a play to open it up for our other tight end running. He was like, he's like kind of my mentor there. He's like, um, run, run the route to win. It was like, there's a chance you could get the ball. So like I run it, stick my foot in the ground, then I look and the ball is just in the air. I was like, oh, I was just like, it was kind of hot. It was high though. So I was like, man, let me just put one hand up. Like I've made that catch plenty of times in practice. So it didn't surprise a bunch, like people in the organization have seen me do it. So like they've been kind of used to it, but for it to happen in a game and score my first touchdown off it, that was just like the crazy part about it. And how do you handle, you know, you said it, you know, your friends, your family, the organization, was able to see what you're capable of. But people on the outside, they were like, he's a basketball player. What does he know about football? How did you kind of handle the naysayers that didn't think you could make it? Um, I really just try not to pay attention to them because at the end of the day, they don't know what's going on. Like, that's why I'm like, people like, they receive tweet Twitter and things like that. At the end of the day, people in the organization know like what you're doing, your family knows because you talk to them and your friends know because you talk to them. People outside, they have no clue. So they're going off just what they think they know or hearsay. So I just try to focus on me and myself and whatever's going on with the team and our business. So you just really can't get caught up into that because that's when things just go sideways. <laughs> Absolutely. Basketball and football are very strategic games. How do you handle kind of breaking down beyond the X's and O's and making sure you understand how it works on a bigger level? Oh man, I tell, when people ask me about football, I tell them it's like, it's like I'm in college all over again. I tell them, I study more now than I ever did when I was in college. It's like, it's, it's crazy because there's so much, like I got here, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm about to just go play football. I got here, there's a lot that goes into it. You got to study shoot, techniques, different, uh, how they line up. Then you have your own plays, then the tight end, you're a blocker and you're a receiver. And then on top of that, you play special teams. And special teams is very in-depth also, which is something I didn't know before I got to the league. So, I mean, I just try to study every week. And um, luckily, I've had great coaches and great tight ends that I've played with. They've helped me make that transition because when I first entered the building, like I'm looking at my playbook and I have no clue what I'm looking at. I'm trying to study it. I don't know how to study it because I don't know what it is. But luckily, they helped me over time, and now I'm the one helping the younger guys. Who would you say are your kind of two guys on the team you don't understand a play or a transition or anything like that? Um, I would say Jack, Jack Doyle. Um, he's been a starting tight end since I've got here. And 
we're kind of similar in the way we play and different things like that. So he's helped me out a lot, but he's been the least seven, eight years. So he's seen almost everything that's out there. So whenever I don't know something in the building, they'd be like WWJD, like what would Jack do? Because Jack's one of those guys, like he's not the most athletic or most um, athletically gifted person, but he's one of those that does almost everything right. So if you don't know what you're doing, just follow Jack. <laughs> Say that's a good <laughs> yeah and overall see yourself into the cult style of play um i've kind of already carved out my role like i'm that inline blocker um we call it primarily the wide position um that's primarily where i'm at now but in the future i'm just trying to make more plays in the passing game i made some plays here and there but be more consistent in a passing game, a more consistent passing option. Last year I broke my thumb, so it like kind of hampered me. I was playing with like a club on my right hand, so I was used for primarily blocking. But luckily this year I'm fully healthy going into the first game, so we'll see what happens. And already you've accomplished a lot in the basketball world. Football world, five years from now, do you hope some of those may? Uh, five years from now, um, hopefully a Super Bowl. A uh, couple division, a couple division championships. I like team goals. But for myself, um, shoot, hopefully get to my second contract because that's the hard. That's one of the hardest things to do in football. And um, sh uh, a couple, five, six touchdown seasons, and maybe a couple Pro Bowls here and there. And last but not least, do you have any advice for our young athletes that want to be where you are today? Oh man, the biggest thing I tell kids like. They talk about going to the NFL. Da, da, da. First, you gotta get into college. So the biggest thing is grades. A lot of young kids don't understand. Like you have to have good grades in order to qualify for college. And that's my number one thing I tell kids. I work. You work as hard as you work off the on the court is as hard as you need to work off the court because without your grades, you're not you're not gonna achieve any of the goals that you want to.